Hello, Kaku. How are you folks doing? My name is Armando. Happy New Year. In this video, I'm going to be talking about something that uh, very few people know about. Um, those who follow the um, overthrow of Queen Lilio Kalani and what happened after and know about the history of that <clears throat> pretty much know about you know about the uh, Wilcox uh, rebellions and that's what the uh, focus is on this uh, video is on the Wilcox uh, rebellions and this and the person I'm going to be talking about his name was Robert William Kalani Hiapo Wilcox now <clears throat> he was uh, he was born on February 15, 1855, and he lived until October 23, 1903. And he had the nickname Iron Duke of Hawaii. And uh, he was a native Hawaiian, whose father was a American and whose mother was Hawaiian. Actually, I think if you look back in his uh, mother's lineage, uh, there's some ro royalty, he was, um, only in royalty in that lineage. He was a revolutionary soldier and politician, and he led uprisings against both the government of the Hawaiian Kingdom <coughs> under King Kalakaua and the Republic of Hawaii under Sanford Dole what are now known as the Wilcox Rebellions. He was later elected the first delegate to the United States Congress for the territory of Hawaii. Okay, so it was a uh, quite interesting uh, history on, on, on Robert Wilcox. Anyway, um, Talking more about him, he in 1881, uh, King David Kalakaua selected Wilcox, Robert Wilcox, and two other part Hawaiian young men to study at the Royal Military Academy at Turin in the Kingdom of Italy as a part of the Education of Hawaiian Youths Abroad program. Now, by the time he completed his training in 1885, he achieved the rank of sub-lieutenant of artillery. Impressed with his military skills, Italian officials sent Wilcox to the Royal Application School for Engineering and Artillery Officers. Okay, so he was sent abroad by the king, Kalakaua. Now, in 1888, uh, the Reform Party, which later became the Hawaii Republican Party, took power uh, in the Hawaiian Kingdom. And through what was called the Bayonet Constitution, they removed most political authority from the monarch and placed income and property requirements of voters, limiting the, limiting the electorate to only wealthy Native Hawaiians, Americans, and Europeans. And that disenfranchised a lot of um, Hawaiians, okay, at that time. Now, the Reform Party ended costly programs, such as Wilcox's training in Italy, so on August 29, 1887, Wilcox received his orders to return home. Returning to Hawaii in October with his wife Gina Sobrero, a baroness closely related to Italy's Colonna family, and he began a short-lived career as a surveyor. So he came back. Now, I, mentioned before the, you know, with the Bayonet Constitution, they, they said the king was spending there too much money, extravagant, and, you know, and that's part of the reason why they had him sign that Bayonet Constitution. So this is one of the actions that they took, was to stop the uh, funding of uh, his training in Italy. 
so he came back now however uh, Robert Wilcox he had lost confidence that um, Kalakaua was strong enough to protect the interests of the Hawaiian people so Wilcox along with Charles Wilson and Sam Nolian planned a kurita to replace Kalakaua with his sister Lilio Kalani but the plot was never executed so on February 11, 1988 um, Wilcox left Hawaii intending to return to Italy with his wife now at that time the king stayed away from the palace when he was attempting to um, get uh, the king to change the constitution back to where it was, how it was before but so he stayed away and that's why the plot was never executed now however instead of returning to Italy Wilcox took up residence in uh, San Francisco California and then he worked as a surveyor with his wife while his wife Gina earned extra money teaching French and Italian. And then when he decided to return to Hawaii in the spring of 1889, his wife Gina refused to go back with him and took their daughter back to Italy. So, um, that's what happened. Now, um, Wilcox planned and this time executed Another attempt to force King Kalakaua to sign a new constitution to replace the 1887 document on July 30th, 1889. Now, this is what I was telling you about how Kalakaua avoided the palace. Uh, apparently, he was aware of the, what was going on, the plot. So he avoided, avoided the palace, afraid that the rebellion would replace him with his sister, Lilio Kalani. Okay, so that's what happened with that. Now, Wilcox was finally confronted by the Honolulu Rifles Militia Unit. After a pitched battle, Wilcox surrendered. And then in October of 1889, he was tried for treason before Judge Albert Francis Judd but acquitted by the jury and then being one of the few leaders to stand up to the conservative royalist reform party earned him respect among the people so you know he got received the people respected him now he helped form a new political party called the National Reform Party which advocated restoring power to the mark. Wilcox was again elected to the Royal Legislature where he served from 1890 to 1893, representing the island of Oahu. Now, however, the Conservatives in the original Reform Party, backed by the economic resources of the Big Five, who had the power at that time, industrial corporations remained in power. Okay, so now, in 1891, King Kalakaua died, and his sister Lilio Kalani became ruling monarch, swearing to uphold the 1887 Constitution when she became queen. Now, Wilcox was angered that Queen Lilio Kalani did not choose him to be in her government. Okay, and then he formed his own National Liberal Party in November of 1891. Okay, so, now, although he, he did not explicitly advocate ending the monarchy, the party advocated uh, restoring power to the people, even if it meant the Republican form of government. Now, after the elections of February 1892, when only 14,000 people were allowed to vote, remember the Bayonet Constitution, 
only certain people could vote, right? Letters and petitions demanded reforms to the constitution of the of the kingdom. So they, they were demanding that they, the change be made to the constitution of the kingdom. So on May 20th, 1892, Wilcox and associates were arrested and charged with conspiring to set up a republic. A month later, the charges were dropped and he was released. So now, back in the legislature, legislature, I should say, he backed a measure that would strip power from the cabinet. And by August 1892, the ministers had resigned. Wilcox founded a newspaper called The Liberal from September 1892 to April of 1893. He edited the section in the Hawaiian language, while an English language section had several other editors. The paper attacked the extravagant lifestyle enjoyed by the royal family, while the common people were suffering the effects of an economic slowdown. Okay. So, now, <clears throat> on November 1st, 1892, Green Lilio Kalani appointed a new cabinet. And two hours later, the legislature, including Wilcox, voted to remove them from office. But on uh, November 8, 1892, a new government acceptable to the legislature was formed. Wilcox no longer directly attacked the Queen but advocated modernization and was quoted in the San Francisco Examiner that, quote, we should take some steps to secure commercial and political protection from some foreign country to come over and uh, take over Hawaii. Okay? So that's what he said. Now, now by the end of 1892, the liberal expressed support for the Queen. So at this time, they were supporting the Queen end of 1892. This is just before the coup d'etat of the uh, against uh, Lilio Kalani. On January 12th, another vote of no confidence allowed the Queen to appoint another cabinet of monarchists. On January 14th, Lilio Kalani suspended the legislature and told the cabinet to sign a new proposed constitution that would restore political power back to her. And I guess that was a nail in the coffin, because when she did that, um, I'll read, tell you more about that. The cabinet advised against it and delayed any action. On January 17, 1893, the Committee of Safety, backed by the Honolulu Rifles, militia unit took over the palace by force. So during this time, Wilcox, who was then a politician, was requested by Lilio Kalani for his previous training in artillery to be put in command of the field pieces of the Royal Guard as they prepared themselves to defend the Queen. Before any shots or fire, Queen Lilio Kalani surrendered to avoid bloodshed. So she surrendered. She didn't want bloodshed. So that's what happened on that date. <laughs> okay. Now, following the overthrow, the re Liberal, that's a newspaper, resumed publication on January 25, 1893. The English language editor Clarence Ashford supported the provisional government of Hawaii which was the government that was formed right after the overthrow of Lilio Kalani, and expressed the view that the Queen had brought about her own downfall. So, you know, they're saying that was her own fault, that, they, you know, that she, had, she, had, she was, uh, they overthrew the Queen. On January 28, the paper argued for becoming a state of the United States but protested the lack of any Native Hawaiians as leaders of the new government. Neither the monarchy nor the provisional government was a representative democracy. Okay, so that's what happened at that time. Now, 
However, the big five, remember the big five? Those are the big companies that controlled Hawaii's economy, who dominated the economy, wanted to avoid statehood. Hmm. Since as a territory, they would not be subject to the American labor laws. They depended on cheap labor for their sugarcane plantations in Hawaii, for example. And by March 1893, President Grover Cleveland decided against annexation anyway. So the Big Five was against uh, Hawaii becoming a, becoming a state because they wanted to keep the cheap labor that was working on, their sh on the plantations and, and the pineapple and sugarcane. Okay, so they wanted to pay them cheap wages. The liberal attacked the efforts of Princess Kaiulani when she traveled to America to argue for support in reinstating the monarchy. Now, Wilcox applied for a position in the new government but was denied. The newspaper shut down on April 15, 1893. So that's what happened to that uh, newspaper. Now, the leaders of the overthrow proclaimed their own Republic of Hawaii on July 4, 1894. From a provisional government to a republic of Hawaii. By the end of the year, royalists were planning a counter revolution to restore Liliokalani. Okay. The key conspirators were Sam Nolian, head of the Queen's Guard, Charles T. Gullick, advisor to both Kalakaua and Liliokalani, and William H. Rickard, a sugar planter of British parentage. They needed a military leader and approached Wilcox. At first he hesitated, but since he was frustrated with the lack of progress on annexation as well as spurned by the Republic, he agreed to lead the forces into battle. So he was going to lead the uh, forces against uh, to restore power back to uh, Queen Liliokalani. Now, this is where the rebellion occurred, you know, when it occurred, 1895. The Royalists and Republican forces clashed at the base of Diamond Head on January 6th and 7th, 1895, and in Mo'ili'ili on January 7th. Manoa was a scene of battle on January 9th. Casualties were minor, and only C. L. Carter, a member of the prominent island family, was killed. The Royalists were quickly routed, and Wilcox spent several days in hiding before being captured. All Royalist leaders had been arrested by January 16th, when Lilio Kalani was taken into custody at Washington Place and imprisoned in the Ilani Palace. Okay, so the Queen was accused of knowing that this rebellion was occurring. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, um, I read where they found the rifles in there at the uh, Washington place. Or in, 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 uh, so they, that's why they accused her. But she denied it that she knew. She was kind of aware. She, she denied that she, she knew of the rebellion and the, and the details or anything like that. She was... she. Nevertheless, they took her, put her in prison, in the palace, in the Ilani Palace. So that's what happened to her at that time. Wilcox, on the other hand, was arrested and tried for treason. This time, he was convicted on February 23rd, 1895, <clears throat> and was sentenced to death with five other leaders. So there were six of them. He and five others were sentenced to death to be killed. So, some were freed due to giving testimony against the others. And his sentence was commuted to 35 years in prison. Now, the queen at that time was being pressured to abdicate by Sanford Dole and the Republic of Hawaii. 
and they said okay that they would free you know or pardon him uh, those who were sentenced to die uh, they would pardon him and so she abdicated and to save their lives and he was pardoned by Sanford Dole president of the republic who had previously made pressured Lilia Kalani to abdicate in exchange for his life and freedom, as well as for the lives of the others who had been sentenced to death. So that's what happened. So the queen saved his life, really. Now, Wilcox married, and this is more in the... So he, he led the rebellions first, the first rebellion was against King Kalakaua, and that was because uh, because of the bayonet constitution, and he felt that the king wasn't strong enough to stand up to these guys, and so he wanted to replace him and put uh, his sister, Lilio Kalani, and that was the first one against the kingdom. The second one was against, his, he led the rebellion against the Republic of Hawaii to try and restore uh, Queen Lilio Kalani back to power. So that's what he was noted for, the two rebellions um, against the kingdom and against the republic. Now on a personal side, Wilcox married two noble women. I mentioned one before from Italy. His first wife was an Italian baroness and his second wife a Hawaiian princess, so he married into royalty. So Wilcox's first wife was Baroness Gina Sobrero, eldest daughter of Baron Lorenzo Sobrero of Piedmont, and Princess Vittoria Colonna di Stigliano of Naples. His daughter, and she was a noble, so his daughter from his first mar marriage died shortly after his breakup with Baroness Gina Sobrero. So sadly, his daughter died. Um, now, on August 20th, 1896, Wilcox married Teresa Oana Kaohele Lani Laanui, who lived from 1860 to 1944 who was descended from a brother of King Kamehameha I. So he married into royalty. They had a son and daughter, Robert and uh, Wilcox, Kewa, Hua, and Wilcox, and they, um, from 18, he lived from 1893 to 1934, and Virginia um, Kahumanu, uh, who lived from 1895 to 1954. Another uh, daughter, Elizabeth, died young in 1898. So that was, um, he married into royalty eventually. Anyway, that's the story of Robert William Wilcox. I think there's a statue too, if I'm not mistaken, in Honolulu. I think it's in downtown. I haven't seen it, but um, there is a statue honoring him check it out but anyway that's a st story of Robert William Wilcox so there was somebody who fought for the Queen actually who tried to restore her back to power through a rebellion and that was him Robert William Wilcox and that's the story of Robert William Wilcox anyway I hope you enjoyed this little short history lesson Mahalo for listening and for watching and ahoy ho.